Dr. Ben Bickman. Metabolic rate has nothing to do with fat loss. Again, this is from Dr. Bickman on Michaela Peterson's podcast number 43. The great myth of weight gain or weight loss is you have some um, 20-year-old, you know, dude who's bragging about, you know, I, I, of course, I'm, I have them all over here because I'm a university professor. He's bragging about how he can eat whatever he wants because he has such a high metabolic rate. Or you have people like who are older out of school. Oh, I gained 10 pounds or I gained 20 or 30 pounds. Once I got married or once I had a baby, my metabolism just really slowed down. All of that is totally false. There's nothing to support that um, perspective at all. In fact, with pregnancy in mind, a part of the great uh, it blows that myth apart quite quite well because the moment a woman becomes pregnant, over the next nine months, her metabolic rate is going to get faster and faster and faster because metabolic rate is just the sum of all the chemical reactions happening in the body, building things up and breaking them down. Anabolic and catabolic, that is metabolic or metabolism or metabolic rate. And, and so metabolic rate does not predict weight gain. In fact, there was a study someone, anyone could look up called the Baltimore Longitudinal Study. And they basically followed a bunch of, a bunch of guys, about a thousand people for 10 years. And they measured metabolic rate at year zero. And at year 10 follow-up, what their baseline metabolic rate had been at year zero in no way predicted who gained or lost weight the most or the least in any, to any degree. However, in that same study, there is an ounce of explanation for what might have predicted their weight gain or, or what might have been responsible for it. And they looked at something called the respiratory exchange ratio. The RER is a measurement of what fuel we're burning. Now, very briefly, human metabolism is like a hybrid where at any moment, the overwhelming majority of all the energy our cells are getting is coming from a mix of carbohydrate, of glucose or fat. So blood sugar or fat, that's the main fuel. And it, it, it's a mix at all the time. We're never burning just one or just the other. All the cells in the body are using these two fuels and shifting between them as needed, maybe because they've eaten or because they fasted. But basically, the RER will tell you, are you more sugar burning or are you more fat burning? What they found was that the people that were more sugar burning, that, that glucose was responsible for the majority of the fuel their body was using, they were the ones who gained the most weight. In contrast, the people that were mm -hmm. more fat burning, they gained the least amount of weight. They were the more likely to stay lean. So someone hearing this would say, okay, well, I don't want to be a sugar burner then because then my chances of gaining weight over the next years is going to be higher. Yes, that study would suggest that's true. Then the core, the follow up would be, well, how do I then become a fat burner? You burn what you eat. And pr unfortunately, because we are such a carb obsessed culture, the world is obsessed with carbohydrates. No one is sitting around on a Saturday night about to indulge in some, in some shows, some TV shows or movies. And they're thinking, Oh, I sure want to play the scrambled eggs. No, no. Okay. One. Just to interrupt, I watched the jungle book with Scarlett last night. Yeah. And we had chicken wings. D ah, just chicken wings, chicken wings and salt. So super crispy, but in our popcorn bowl. So there are some you. people who are doing that, yeah, but yeah, it's fairly are. rare. <laughs> because we are craving something that is salty and crunchy or sweet and gooey. And that is always, almost always going to be carbohydrate. Now you actually found a clever way around it by just crispy crisping chicken. The chicken. Yeah. 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 So that worked. And unfortunately, because we're obsessed with carbohydrates and we eat every two hours, we are constantly in sugar burning mode. And it's only once we lower the carbs and or fast do we shift over to fat burning mode where we can we can shift between these fuels. And once again, insulin rears its relevant head in even in this process, because insulin as it this hormone is what dictates which fuel we're using. If insulin is elevated, we uh -huh. are oblig obligatorily burning glucose. We're sugar burning. If insulin is low, we shift and we start fat burning. In fact, if insulin is low for an extended period of time, like 16 to 20 hours, we start burning so much fat that we actually are burning more fat than we need, so to speak. And some of that fat gets metabolized into ketones. It's called ketogenic really because it's burning fat like gangbusters. It's just tearing through the fat in the body. It's burning it at such a high rate, we start making ketones from it. If you're fat burning, it's easier to control your weight because it, those fat cells are not filled with glucose. They're filled with fat. And it's only once we start burning fat can we actually start to control our body fat. If we're stuck burning sugar all the time, those fat cells are never touched. 
in a, in a general way, in a generic sense, and thus they just keep pulling in energy, never actually using it because we aren't burning fat. Why might someone be gaining weight more easily than another? Part of it could be that just the, the composition of the foods they're eating and their inherent differences in insulin sensitivity. Insulin resistance is genetic where some people will just be more insulin resistant than other people. So those people that are more insulin resistant naturally, they will have to fight harder. Their insulin is going to want to be higher all the time. And so it'll be a harder fight for them to keep it low, but they can do it. And, and, and once again, the truth of the situation is it's not their metabolic rate. It's really this, what fuel, the sentiment of what fuel are you burning? If insulin is high, you're burning sugar, you're not burning fat, and the insulin is going to stimulate the fat cells to grow and store energy rather than break things down.